I'm about to reveal the best yield farm out there that allows you to get 50% annualized on assets like Ethereum, Bitcoin, and stablecoins. And on top of that, I'm going to show you exactly how you can leverage this yield farm to earn a yield of over 100% annualized without liquidation risk. Now, the yield farm that I am referencing is GMX.io. It's a decentralized perpetual exchange that allows you to trade cryptocurrency futures directly on chain, directly from your wallet. So for example, you can go over here and you can long an asset with leverage up to 50x leverage. And you can also do the same thing on a short asset. You can set limit orders, you can set trigger orders, and of course you can execute normal decentralized exchange swaps. Now the benefit of this is you can do it directly from your wallet and you don't have to go on a centralized exchange like Binance, KuCoin, Gate.io, MEXC, or anything like that and park your funds in a centralized entity. Because of course with all the recent drama with the SEC suing Coinbase and suing Binance and all the other centralized exchanges that went under, you don't want to have to worry about having your money on a centralized exchange and that's exactly where GMX comes into play. Now, when you're trading cryptocurrency futures, you're trading something known as derivatives. I'm not going to explain why it's named that. You can do that research on your own time. But currently, the derivative sector of DeFi has a TVL of $1.4 billion, and it's ranked number eight. But the thing is, the derivative sector only started growing in the time span of about 2022. It hasn't really had its time in the bull market. So once the bull market comes into play, we see even more people trading cryptocurrency futures on chain. We can expect to have higher yields. Currently, GMX makes up for about half of the overall derivative market within the DeFi space with a TVL of over $620 million. And the reason why it has such a high TVL compared to other products that have been out for a while like DYDX with a TVL of $350 million is because they are on layer two scaling solution networks. DYDX is on the Ethereum network. You have to pay a lot of gas fees to actually execute trades. So in reality, it's cheaper to just go on a centralized exchange and it's way more worth it. Whereas on GMX, it's on the Arbitrum network as well as the Avalanche network, which means that you can easily trade with super low gas fees. Now, I do want to mention that this is not a paid promotion. This is not a sponsorship. I don't have any contact with the GMX team. I'm just truly bullish on the product that they've been building and I have been for the past year or so now. I've made previous videos on GMX and I'm going to talk about two platforms that allow you to leverage your GMX yield in this video. But first off, I want to talk more about GMX and GLP token. Now remember, GMX is decentralized, so it does have to have a liquidity provider system in order for it to be fully decentralized, which means people like you and me can put up our liquidity for people to trade from and then in return we're gonna get paid the fees that traders pay so glp is essentially the liquidity asset if you hold glp you are essentially providing liquidity for gmx exchange now glp is backed by ethereum wrap bitcoin a very little portion in link as well as uni and then stable coins like usdc tether Dai, and frax now you'll notice that they have weights right here and they have a current weight and a target weight the target weight is how much of the overall glp composition they want that specific asset to make up for so for example, currently Ethereum has a weight of 27.83%, but they want it to make up for about 30% of the overall GLP composition. And then so on and so forth with Bitcoin as well as these other assets. Now there are a few things that change the weight of the asset. Number one is price action. If Ethereum goes down and Bitcoin goes up, obviously Bitcoin is making up for a greater weight and Ethereum is making up for a lesser weight. The other thing is if too many traders win on a specific asset or if traders just win or lose in general. And that's because when you are providing liquidity for GLP, your risk is that you are the counterparty to the traders. So this is essentially the equivalent of impermanent loss in a platform like Uniswap V3 or Trader Joe or so on and so forth. So let's just say a trader executes a trade and they make $100 on that trade. And let's just say that $100 was in Ethereum. Well, then essentially they're taking $100 from the Ethereum weight and it's being paid out to them. So they are taking money from the GLP pool, which causes the GLP price to go down. Now, the other thing is if traders lose their trades and they're putting $100 into the Ethereum pool or whatever asset it may be, which causes GLP price to go up. That's ultimately what affects the weights the most, traders winning and losing on specific assets. I will say, historically, people that were trading on GMX exchange have lost the majority of their trades. Initially, they started to win some of their trades with an overall P&L of $150,000, $200,000. But as you can see, it just went down and down and down over time, which is actually good for liquidity providers because not only are they making money from the yield, not only are they making money from the assets rising in price, they're also making money because they are the counterparty and these traders are losing. Losing. But as you can see, as of recently, about this year, they have started winning more and more of their trades until they hit a plateau and started winning and losing about the same amount of their trades. So only time will tell. However, if you initially invested into GLP all the way back at the beginning or even in the middle, you would still be at a profit today because traders wouldn't have won the majority of their trades. Now, currently, you can actually stake GLP for about a 48.5% annualized yield, which is really, really nice. And there's about $530 million worth of GLP staked. Now, the other thing I want to talk 
talk about is the GMX token because there's a fee share between GMX as well as GLP. GMX is the governance token of the platform and there's currently about $375 million staked with only a total of about $470 million in circulation. So the majority of GMX is staked and that's because you can earn a 13% return on investment from just staking GMX. But the reason why you might want to be holding GMX is in the case that GMX platform starts to pick up, more people start to buy the GMX token and of course that causes a price rise for GMX token. And then of course if you just wanted to earn the 13% annualized yield. Now, as I mentioned earlier, GMX and GLP are on the Avalanche network as well, but the thing is the backing assets of GLP are a little bit different than they are on the Arbitrum network. The system is exactly the same. You're still the counterparty to traders, but of course this time GLP is backed by AVAX, Ethereum, Bitcoin, as well as USDC. So on the Avalanche network, it's simply backed by blue chip assets and USDC. It doesn't have any exposure to any other stable coins like it does on the Arbitrum network or any exposure to assets like Link and Uni. Now over on the Avalanche network, there's currently about 67, 68 million dollars worth of overall liquidity for GLP, which is pretty nice. And the yield is quite lower than the Arbitrum network at around 17.3%. And this one is actually paid out in AVAX as opposed to Ethereum. And that's because on the Avalanche network, AVAX is native to Avalanche, whereas Ethereum is native to Arbitrum. Another thing I will mention about both of these yields is these get updated every single Wednesday based on the previous week's data. So for example, they'll collect data from Wednesday to Wednesday. And on the second Wednesday, which is the end of the week, they will update the APR, which of course reflects the fees collected the previous week. So sometimes in the Arbitrum network, the yield will be around maybe five to 10% one week. And then the next week, it'll be around 50% like it currently is. But ultimately, as long as you're in this position for long enough, it'll average out to around 30% annualized. And that's exactly why there's a 50% annualized yield on GLP on the Arbitrum network, and then a 18% annualized yield on the Avalanche network. Now, I do want to mention, I just released a free market neutral guide that teaches you how to make passive income through DeFi, through market neutral strategies without taking on any exposure. This link is going to be down below in the description because some of the strategies that you can actually do is borrow against your GLP assets and invest that into market neutral strategies to get an even greater yield. And as always, it's free and it's down below in the description. Now let's talk about how exactly you could leverage these on platforms like Jones Dow as well as Stedify. Jones Dow is a strategy platform, which means that they have strategies that they run for you. You don't have to go and manually execute those strategies. All you have to do is deposit into the vault and they're going to go and they're going to do the strategy for you. Now they have two vaults for GLP. One's a gamma neutral USDC vault and one's a leveraged Delta GLP vault. So essentially the leveraged Delta GLP vault is GLP, but with leverage, which means number one, you have an increased yield. Number two, you have increased market exposure. And number three, you have increased and permanent loss exposure, which of course is if traders win too many of their trades. Currently, this is doing around 106% annualized, which is really, really nice. And how they're able to leverage up on GLP is simply by borrowing from their gamma neutral USDC vault. Let's just say somebody deposits $100 into the GLP vault and they're using 3x leverage currently in the GLP vault. Once again, just to estimate, what they'll do is they'll go and they'll borrow $200 from the USDC vault, which essentially gives them $300 exposure to GLP. But at the same time, the person deposited into the GLP vault takes on all the market exposure. Because in the case that the price goes down 10%, the $300 would lose $30. Well, the $100, which is the deposit, would lose that $30. And that's because the person depositing into the GLP vault is taking on all the risk and the USDC vault is just simply lending out their capital to be leveraged capital. And to talk quickly about how exactly this works, you have two options. Number one, you can deposit using any asset and you can compound your deposits. You're going to get something called JGLP. Your deposits are automatically compounded and accumulated in the JGLP token. So essentially this JGLP token, the yield will be accrued in the price of it, which means that it will trade higher than the actual GLP token. And that's because over time, the yield is continuing to be accrued in JGLP. So at the beginning, it was one JGLP equals one GLP, but now it takes more GLP to equal one JLP. And then of course, you can not compound your deposits. That's the other option. You can manually claim your Ethereum rewards over here. That's what I did initially before switching into the auto compounding vault. I currently have about $2,900 of my own capital in JGLP. Now, Stedify is another platform. They use the same exact lending and borrowing system where they borrow from their own vault, but they just have another version of the GLP vault. This time, it's the Stedify version. Now, Stedify has a 3x long GLP vault currently doing around 100% annualized, and then they tack on about 38% annualized in their own token as incentives. And the other thing that you could do is you can actually lend to this GLP vault and get about 13% annualized, so not too bad. But the cool thing is they don't just have lending in USDC, they have lending in Ethereum as well as lending in RAB Bitcoin, which means that you could effectively get a 10% annualized yield on your RAB Bitcoin or a 10% annualized yield on your Ethereum. Another thing is they have a neutral GLP vault as well, which means that they 
hedge the assets of GLP, like Ethereum, wrap Bitcoin, and so on and so forth. So you don't have any market exposure here. You're just expected to get the yield. And this is doing about 100% annualized yield before they toss on their additional incentives as well. So to clarify, the 3x neutral GLP vault is a market neutral vault, whereas they have long vaults, which is just simply long exposure to 3x long GLP as well. And I currently have about $1,000 in 3x long GLP vault, but I will say the Setify team did send me the $1,000 to deposit in their vault. But the reason why they did that is simply because I didn't have any liquidity and I did want to invest into the project so I could showcase it to you guys. If you guys do want to learn more about Jones DAO as well as Stedify, I have videos on those platforms on my channel, so make sure to check those out. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to drop a like as well as subscribe when notifications turned on. Once again, don't forget to check out that free resource down below in the description. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.